War das alles nur ein Traum? Es war der Abend vor der Wahl 2016. Alles schien nach Plan zu laufen. Für Laien wie auch für Experten war die Wahl schon seit Monaten entschieden. There's not gonna be a President Donald Trump. Um, that's not gonna happen. Donald Trump is not going to be President of the United States. Donald Trump will never be elected President of the United States. He's not gonna be President. Is there a path to victory for Donald Trump at this point? No. Do you still think she has a 100% chance of winning the election? Mm. I do. I'm not sure the Republican Party is going to survive. I would like to introduce to you the next president of the United States, Mr. Hillary Clinton. Thank you all, and thanks to Jay-Z and Beyonce. And thanks to Chance the Rapper and J. Cole and Nick Sean. She had no idea who these rappers were, but that was not wichtig. The big day is finally here, and it's time to vote. Eine sorglose Nation erwachte an jenen Morgen zur Meldung der New York Times, dass Trumps Siegeschance nur 15 Prozent betrage. You know, growing up as a little girl, I never thought I could be president. It's becoming very real. Congrats, Hillary, our first woman president. Woo, Hillary, all the way, all the way to the White House. I waited over an hour to vote. I'm so happy. <laughs> In Rochester, New York, thousands put I voted stickers on the grave of suffragist Susan B. Anthony. This is the most important election that I have ever voted in. I got to vote for a woman for president. Lange bevor die Stimmen ausgezählt worden waren, knallten auf Hillary Clintons Wahlparty in New York City bereits die Champagnerkorken. This has a literal glass ceiling. A glass ceiling they're hoping to symbolically burst through tonight. Let's be one nation indivisible with a kick-ass president. Währenddessen nur 17 Blocks entfernt. It's a decidedly small venue, perhaps the smallest one I've ever seen for an event like this. Es sah schlecht aus für den Gegenkandidaten. Seine Anhänger ahnten Böses. GOP officials now fear that if Donald Trump loses by a landslide, he could take down the congressional majorities with him. Und Fox News schien erleichtert zu sein, diesen Mann nicht vier Jahre lang unterstützen zu müssen. I think Hillary's going to win. The betting odds on the presidential race are three to one in favor of Secretary Clinton. Look at all these wins we're projecting for Hillary Clinton right now. She wins New Jersey with 14 electoral votes. Mrs. Clinton is also performing strongly on the East Coast. Massachusetts, Maryland, and Illinois with 20 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton projected the winner. No huge surprises thus far. Doch dann geschah etwas Seltsames. Big news for the first time tonight, really big news in the presidential race. We can project that Donald Trump will win the state of Ohio. Donald Trump will carry the state of North Carolina. And that is huge for Donald Trump. This is exactly what he needed to do. Donald Trump will carry the state of Florida, state of Wisconsin. He will win Wisconsin. No! Trump doing very well in Pennsylvania right now. The cliffhanger going on here in Michigan. 56% of the vote is in. Look at how close it is. Right now, Donald Trump is ahead. It's completely flipped now. Fox News machte alles noch schlimmer, indem sie meinen Namen erwähnten. Michael Moore, who knows white working class voters, has made movies about them, grew up in Michigan, had been saying all along to the Democrats, dismiss him at your own peril. And he said, I'm warning you, I know the people who live in my state, and I know how they think, and I know what their concerns are. Everybody should uh, head home. You should get some sleep. We're not going to have anything more to say tonight. This is a Fox News election alert. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. Es sah aus, als 
ginge Trump zum Schafott. Er hatte keine Siegesrede verfasst. Noch nie wirkten Menschen nach einer gewonnenen Wahl so traurig wie dieses Grüppchen. Am 9.11.2016 wurde das Antlitz des neuen amerikanischen Präsidenten auf das Empire State Building projiziert. Wie zur Hölle konnte es so weit kommen? die Russen. Und natürlich war es James Comey. Aber in die Geschichte wird eingehen, dass niemand mehr Verantwortung für Trumps Einzug ins Weiße Haus trug als diese Frau. Richtig, Gwen Stefani. Lassen Sie es mich erklären. Ladies and Gentlemen, my father Donald J. Trump. Hier sieht man Trumps nicht ernst gemeinte Ankündigung, als Präsident der USA kandidieren zu wollen. Dieser Einfall kam ihm, als er herausgefunden hatte, dass NBC Gwen Stefani bei The Voice mehr Gage gezahlt hat als ihm bei The Apprentice. Für 50 Dollar pro Kopf kaufte er sich Statisten, die ihm zujubeln sollten. Damit wollte er NBC beweisen, dass er beliebter sei als Gwen Stefani und mehr Gage verdiene. Außerdem stellte er mit dieser gespielten Ankündigung seine Improvisationskünste unter Beweis. So gerieten die Dinge außer Kontrolle. They sweated like dogs. I'm really rich. I'll show you that. They do a website. It cost me three dollars. That I got from China in a war. The sun will rise. The moon will set. He wasn't a cheerleader. He was the opposite. Even our nuclear arsenal doesn't work. I think I'm actually a very nice person. We have nothing. I just sold an apartment for 15 million dollars to somebody from China. I learned so much just sitting at his feet, playing with blocks. They're rapists. And some 
probably from the Middle East. And I promise I will never be in a bicycle race, that I can tell you. We now have a gun on every table. We're ready to start shooting. The American dream is dead. NBC says it's cutting business ties with Donald Trump. Donald Trump receives a pink slip of his own. Citing his derogatory statements, calling Mexican immigrants rapists, drug dealers and criminals. Sein Plan ging nach hinten los. Er war nun arbeitslos und obwohl er nicht wirklich Präsident werden wollte, ermunterten ihn seine Söhne, wenigstens zwei Kundgebungen zu absolvieren. Als er sah, wie die Massen ihn feierten, einer Menschenmenge, wie sie noch nie vor ihm gestanden hatte, kam ihm die Erleuchtung. Als Präsident zu kandidieren, war vielleicht doch keine schlechte Idee. Im Gegenteil, es war eine brillante Idee. Scheiß auf Gwen Stefani und NBC. Ich werde der König der Welt. Niemand war über diese Entscheidung glücklicher als die amerikanischen Medien. Denn Trump wurde zu ihrem Goldesel. NBC konnte ihn jetzt kostenlos ins Fernsehen bringen. Zuerst sorgte er für Lacher. We better be ready for the fact that he might be leading the Republican ticket next. <lacht> I know you don't believe that, but I want to go on. <lacht> Später fing er an, ihnen Vorschriften zu machen. But I want the cameras to span the room. Go ahead, fellas, watch. They don't turn them. They don't turn them. They don't turn them. Go ahead, turn them. Look, turn the camera. Go ahead. You with the blonde hair, turn the camera. Show them how many people come to these rallies. Schließlich begann er zu diktieren, wie Interviews zu führen seien. Hey, welcome back to Morning Joe. Let's bring in right now on the phone Donald Trump. How are you doing this morning, first of all, Donald? I'm doing good. I, I did a phoner. It's always good when they take you by phone. That means you're hot. We do phoners to meet the press. Donald Trump himself. Good morning, Chuck. Welcome back to Meet the Press, sir. Good morning, Chuck. I'm joined now on the phone from New York. It's so much easier, folks. You sit home. Hi, how you doing? How's everything going? Und dann einfach nur zum Spaß ließ er sie warten, so wie an diesem Tag in Portland, Maine. Frontrunner Donald Trump expected to speak at a campaign rally in Portland, Maine. Sie warten. So we're just expecting him uh, to come out here in just a few minutes. Und warten. We're awaiting his remarks moments from now. Not on stage yet, as you can see. Once again, we're standing by live. The candidate is just not at the... Go ahead and toss it back to you. I think you're telling me Trump's coming out now, Craig? No, no, no. No, you're good. You're good, Hallie. You're good. Oh, I can keep He's going? He's not coming out yet. <laughs> What will he say? We are again waiting. He can't seem to get a rally started on time. Watching that podium. Any moment now. A Fox News alert still waiting for that Donald Trump. Let me show you. They're even up in the balcony. Take a look. Supposed to begin about 25 minutes ago. We Donald Trump. Um, false alarm. A bunch of people coming. Uh, not one of them is dumb. He's getting ready to walk over to that lecture. Any minute now. The We've been watching and waiting for the better part of the half hour here. Es muss ihn angemacht haben zu sehen, wie lange eine Fernsehkamera live sein leeres Podium filmt. Let's just keep a watch here because let's go. Donald Trump. Thank you so much. What a turnout. What a turnout. If you go back to the rallies, let me ask you a question. Did you put the rallies on because they were of news value or because they were driving ratings? Well, uh, uh. <laughs> Man, who would have expected the ride we're all having right now? This is pretty amazing and, uh, you know, who would have thought that this circus would come to town? But, um, you know, it may not be good for America, but it's damn good for CBS. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> The money's rolling in, and it's amazing. It's, that's all I can say. I've never seen anything like this, and uh, you know, this is going to be a, a very good year for us. All diese großen TV-Sender wurden von Männern geleitet, und einige ihrer Aushängeschilder hatten viel gemeinsam mit Donald Trump. The word judgment has been used a lot concerning your use of your personal email. Why wasn't it disqualifying if you want to be commander? Well, 
she has to learn to do it with humor. And when she does it now, she's, she's being kind of aggressive. And I'm Mark Halperin. And I'm Donald Trump. Do you think the email crisis contributed to the question of trust? It was certainly not a choice I would do again. Okay, and I don't want to hear you out on this. You've said, I'm yeah. sorry. That's I right. made a mistake. That's it was right. the wrong thing to do. That's right. Take everything, take everything Fox News has a secret formula, and we're never going to tell anybody what it is. <laughs> There's got to be some downside to having a woman president, right? Something. Hold it. Let's get some more air conditioning. Hey, uh, Matt, turn up the air conditioning. Up the air conditioning. Dieser bösartige Narzisst, der auf der rechten Seite, hat die Medien immer wie Trottel behandelt und ist damit durchgekommen. Ich sollte es am besten wissen. 1998 war Trump in Roseanne Bars neuer Talkshow eingeladen. Erst kurz vorher erfuhr er, dass er mit mir auftreten sollte. Ich freute mich auf ein Wortgefecht, aber darauf hatte er keine Lust. Er wollte sich davon stehlen. Tell her. Have a good time. Excuse me, Mr. Trump? Roseanne's Produzenten hielten ihn auf und baten mich, ihn nicht zu hart anzupacken. I don't know. He was scheduled to be on Politically Incorrect with me, and, and when he heard I was on, he uh, skedaddled. So. Did he really? Yeah. We're not, you know, we're a daytime show, so there can't be... What does she want to do? She would love to she have you both out there. Have yeah. you asked him? No. Uh -huh. You were the easy ones to see on. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> get you on board, oh, I'm sure then... Ich wollte nicht, dass Trump Roseanne's show ruiniert. Deshalb habe ich gute Miene zum bösen Spiel gemacht. I've been on unemployment three different times in my life. And but you know what? Neither one of us was ever a billion dollars in the hole. <laughs> I was down, you know, almost about 900 million in a negative sense. Oh you know, my. Go Statt zu fragen, welche russischen Mafiosi ihn da rausgeholt hatten, habe ich nur einen Witz gemacht. And, and, and what unemployment line were you standing in? <laughs> I was doing, I was doing that. <laughs> Aber ich habe etwas Interessantes erfahren. Er kannte meinen Film Roger and Me. I tell you, I loved, I loved what he did. Oh. If I was Roger, I wouldn't have liked it, but I, I enjoyed it. I oh. hope he never does one on me, though. I would. <laughs> you know, it's very interesting, Bill, because I met Michael and had dinner with Michael years ago, and I found him to be a really nice guy, great guy. Ich war nie mit Donald Trump essen. Das hat er sich ausgedacht. Und das war nicht mein einziges Mal in Trumpland. Hier tätschle ich Jared Kushner den Rücken. 2007 begeisterte er sich so sehr für staatliche Gesundheitssysteme, dass er die Premierenfeier meines Films ausrichtete. I think Michael chooses very interesting topics and I think uh, he's also one of the great people of stringing together an argument. He does a great job of putting together a lot of different clippings and a lot of different information in a way that it's very easily digestible by a lot of people. If you had to throw out a topic for his next film, what do you think that would be? Knowing Michael will be something that we're not thinking about and something that, you know, really needs a light to be shine on it. Wissen Sie, wer noch seine Dreckpfoten im Spiel hatte? Dieser Typ. Jahre später erfuhr ich, dass Steve Bannons Firma meinen Film auf DVD rausgebracht hat. Michael Moore is a master of the craft. I'm just an apprentice. I just he has integrity. I, just, I actually admire Michael Moore as a filmmaker. I think he's a great filmmaker. I don't agree with his politics, but I think he makes great films. Keine Ahnung, was ich davon halten soll, aber vielleicht bin ich zu vertraut mit dem Feind. Hier war ich live bei Facebook, nur zwei Tage vor der Wahl. Ich mache Werbung für Hillary Clinton. Und wer taucht plötzlich auf? Oh Kelly? my God! <laughs> Kellyanne Conway, oh my God. Oh my God. We are, we Michael, met, be we... honest, he's gonna win Michigan. Ich hatte Kellyanne in Talkshows getroffen, aber das war übertrieben. Als ich mit ihr auf der Fifth Avenue kuschelte, saß 66 Etagen über uns der zukünftige Präsident und kuschelte mit seinem Eimer Hähnchenteile. Und ich fragte mich, wie gut kennen wir Donald Trump eigentlich? She's really a beautiful baby and she's got Marla's legs. We don't know whether or not she's got this part yet, but time will tell. You're going up the escalator? I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Can you go 
Who is his favorite? I'm going with Ivanka. <laughs> I'm going with Ivanka. <laughs> She's six feet tall. She's got the best body. When Ivanka Trump came on stage, it's nice to see a dad kiss his daughter. Trump responded, he kisses her every chance he gets. Did your daughter get breast implants? No, she didn't. I mean, I would know if she did. She's uh -huh. actually always been very voluptuous. You, you are special. You remind me of my daughter. I like you. I like you. And you had sex with her? Yes. He's very proud of Ivanka. He said I was beautiful like her. If Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. You know? <laughs> Stop it! Oh, it's so weird! <laughs> What's the favorite thing you have in common with your father? Either real estate or golf. Donald, with your daughter? Well, I was going to say sex, but I can't relate that to <laughs> Bereitet Ihnen das ein unbehagliches Gefühl? Ich verstehe nicht warum. Nichts davon ist neu. Er hat seine Verbrechen immer in aller Öffentlichkeit begangen. We expect to be successful in court. Wir wussten von dem Mietskandal. Hätte er danach jemals wieder Immobilien vermieten dürfen? Auch das hat er getan. Die Hinrichtung von fünf unschuldigen schwarzen Jugendlichen gefordert. And let's all hate these people, because maybe hate is what we need if we're going to get something done. We don't know who did that crime. Und davon wussten auch alle Amerikaner. All I want to do is see this guy's birth certificate. Trotzdem hat sich niemand an NBC gewandt. America's boss, Donald Trump. Um einen Rassisten vom Bildschirm verschwinden zu lassen. Mit seiner Fremden- und Frauenfeindlichkeit. To have the owner come waltzing in, when we're naked, in a very physically vulnerable position. You know, I'm inspecting, right, I want right. to make sure that like everything is good. You're, you're there. Yeah, the dress is everyone okay? You know, they're <laughs> yeah. standing there with no clothes. And so I sort of get away with things like that. Aus all dem hat er nie ein Geheimnis gemacht. Als ob es in Ordnung wäre, wenn man es öffentlich macht. Niemand widersprach. Es wurde sogar toleriert, dass er vor internationalen Fernsehkameras Verrat beging, weil er es nicht heimlich tat. President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. Trump mag starke Männer. Den Autokraten, den Diktator. Nehmen wir diese beiden starken Bosse. Sie kennen sich schon lange. Der Mann rechts trat sein Amt als Gouverneur von Michigan an, bevor der Mann links die Präsidentenwahl gewann. Bevor Donald J. Trump auf die Welt losgelassen wurde, bahnte sich in meiner Heimat ein Drama an, wie man es in den USA nicht für möglich gehalten hätte. Es nahm seinen Anfang 2010 als ein Republikaner namens Rick Snyder zum Gouverneur von Michigan gewählt wurde. Er war unerfahren im Staatsdienst, spielte aber herausragend Tischfußball. Und er hatte sehr viel Geld. Er war Geschäftsführer bei Gateway Computers gewesen. Diese Scheißdinger sind vielleicht noch ein Begriff? Er erzählte den Wählern meines Bundesstaats, dass er Michigan wie ein Unternehmen leiten wolle. I was hired to serve our citizens. They're my customers. Na klar, wir sind die Kunden. Die Kunden seines großen Unternehmens. Die, die für die milliardenschwere Steuerentlastung der Reichen zahlen. The Michigan business tax is gone. Durch seinen Sieg ermutigt, wollte er mehr sein als nur Gouverneur. Er wollte mehr Macht. Und wie bekommt man mehr Macht? Man verängstigt Menschen und ruft den Notstand aus. Go, 
Governor Rick Snyder appoints an emergency manager. Prop one, the emergency financial emergency manager. manager. Which citizens got their emergency manager. And it is official. State police and a security team out to try and keep peace. The emergency manager bill is now a law. Governor Snyder signed the emergency manager law. Doch von einem Notstand konnte keine Rede sein. Eher von einem Staatsstreich, denn Snyder hat Bürgermeister und Stadträte entmachtet. In den Städten Detroit, Flint, Pontiac und Benton Harbor. Dort sollten seine Handlanger nach seinen Wünschen regieren. Das war ein gezielter Plan, um öffentliche Dienste zu reduzieren und zu privatisieren, damit Geschäftsleute wie er mehr Geld scheffeln konnten. People don't think that this is happening in the United States. If you don't say like Flint, Michigan, and you just say the powers of this person, like they'll think like it's Honduras. This is a way to target black and brown communities. It was a king. The governor put a king into the city of Flint, and he ruled without being responsible to anyone. Look at the cities in Michigan that are under emergency management. The ones at, the governor took over. The governor took over. At one point, 50% of African Americans in the state were under emergency management, compared to 2% of whites. Snyder's idea, the democracy in Michigan's überwiegend afroamerikanischen Städten abzuschaffen, beeindruckte den zukünftigen Präsidenten so sehr, dass er seine Unterstützung anbot. Can you share your thought on an emergency manager situation that's still unfolding in our city? Well, that is unfolding. I, I've been reading about the emergency manager, and I, you know, my attitude is whatever it takes to make that next step. You know, we could say this maybe a little bit about the country. Whatever it takes to get it to the next step is what I would support. Gouverneur Snyder wollte seine Alleinherrschaft ausweiten. Er sah die Möglichkeit, die ärmste Stadt des Landes auszubeuten und mit ihr das größte Süßwasserreservoir der Welt. Er hätte alles so lassen können, wie es gewesen war. Denn 50 Jahre lang hatte Flint sein Trinkwasser aus dem Lake Huron bekommen. 10.000 Jahre altes, glasklares Gletscherwasser, das durch öffentliche Leitungen transportiert wurde. Doch Snyder entschied sich, eine neue Leitung bauen zu lassen, die überhaupt nicht notwendig war. Die einzigen, die von ihr profitierten, waren Investoren, Snyders Wahlkampfspender und Banken wie Wells Fargo. Die Sache hatte noch einen Haken. Während die neue Leitung gebaut wurde, kam Flints Wasser nicht mehr aus dem Lake Huron, sondern aus dem verseuchten Flint River. We believe there was a significant financial fraud that drove this. Was it for the benefit of the local unit of government or for the individual? Individuals. At this level. Individuals. Individuals are doing it for themselves. Yes. You know, I believe greed um, drove this. Ab April 2014 ließ der Gouverneur die Stadt mit Trinkwasser aus dem Flint River versorgen. Here's the Flint. Here's the Flint. Here he is. Hier stößt sein Team auf etwas an, das man getrost als schleichende ethnische Säuberung bezeichnen kann. Three, two, one. Some residents are wondering, will we see a change? No, the average resident won't notice any difference. Look down in there. Nach wenigen Tagen bemerkten die Normalbürger einen Unterschied, einen großen Unterschied. Die Haare fielen ihnen aus. Sie bekamen Hautausschläge. Ihre Kinder wurden krank. Eltern von scheinbar gesunden Kindern machten sich trotzdem Sorgen. Denn es stellte sich heraus, dass fast jedes Kind Blei zu sich genommen hatte. There is no safe level of lead in a, in a body of anybody. There is no safe level of lead. Um, it is potent and it is irreversible, which means once it is in your blood, it wreaks havoc. Um, it, you mean irreversible for how long? Forever. It literally drops IQ levels of children. It leads to impulse disorder and then memory issues, violent behavior, aggressiveness, it also impacts your DNA. Moms exposed to lead, you can see the DNA changes in their grandchildren. 
Die Nachricht der bevorstehenden Katastrophe drang zum Gouverneur. Heimlich ließ er in Flint nachforschen, was genau da vor sich ging. Der Bericht enthielt schlechte Neuigkeiten. Der Ermittler empfahl, sofort zum Wasser aus dem Lake Huron zurückzuwechseln. Doch der Gouverneur hatte andere Ideen. Er schickte PR-Leute, um das Problem zu lösen. Water, that is leaving the plant, is always assured to be at the top notch uh, of quality. Für ihn gab es eine noch viel größere Tragödie. Das Wasser aus dem Flint River ließ im Werk von General Motors Autoteile korrodieren. Als Rick Snyder davon erfuhr, platzte ihm der Kragen. Schließlich hatte General Motors Hunderttausende Dollar an die Vereinigung republikanischer Gouverneure gespendet, um Kandidaten wie ihn bei den Wahlen zu unterstützen. Und nun war das Eigentum dieses Großsponsors beschädigt worden. Das ging eindeutig zu weit. Snyder ließ sofort wieder Wasser aus dem Lake Huron nach Flint leiten. Allerdings nur ins Werk von General Motors. Die Bürger von Flint bekamen weiterhin giftiges Wasser. Nobody's gonna believe this, that the one GM factory that's remaining here in Flint, they got to hook back up to the fresh, clean Lake Huron water and everybody yeah. else. And we were like, well, what's happening to our bodies? And they were like, they went back to, it's safe as meeting all federal and state guidelines. And that was, that was like the drum. But the auto parts that had to be washed in the factory had to have the clean, pure water. Yeah. From Lake Huron. Yeah, because profit reigns supreme. We didn't own General Motors. That's why we didn't, uh, we didn't get like the clean, safe water. So, you know, Trump is looking at this whole Flint water poisoning, and he's got to be thinking, wow, the governor got away with poisoning a majority black city? What will I be able to get away with? Look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Go home and get a job. Go home, get a job. Yeah, and if there's a group out there, just run the hell out. Knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. Now there's a remnant. Yeah, he's right there. Hello. Uh-oh. In the good old days, they'd rip him out of that seat so fast. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. We are going to make America great again. I will tell you that our system is broken. You know, most of the people on this stage I've given to, just so you understand. Before this, before two months ago, I was a businessman. I give to everybody. When they call, I give. And you know what? When I need something from them, two years later, three years later, I call them, they are there for me. So what And that's get? a broken system. Er hatte recht. Das System ist kaputt. Deshalb beschloss er, es noch mehr zu zerstören indem er seine 16 republikanischen Konkurrenten ausschaltete. You're not going to be able to insult your way to the presidency. Yes, excuse me, one second. Well, this guy's a joke artist and this guy's a liar. Schritt für Schritt besiegte Trump die Elite der Republikaner. Donald Trump said, quote, Look at that face. Would anyone vote for that? Can you imagine that, the face of our next president? Und wie gut fühlte es sich doch an, zuzusehen, wie er den letzten Bush kastrierte. They lied. Okay. They said there were weapons of mass destruction. There were none, and they knew there were none. We should have never been in a I am sick and tired of him going after my family. Excuse this. me. One second. No. I the didn't want to get. Donald, oh, you good. cannot take more energy tonight. I like no. that. Get back in the business of creating a more peaceful world. Please clap. Nachdem er die Republikaner vernichtet hatte, überholte er Hillary Clinton auf der linken Spur. Unlike her, who voted for the war without knowing what she was doing, I would not have had our people in Iraq. Stück für Stück nahm er eine Position ein, die liberaler war als ihre. Don't vote for a Wall Street sellout like Hillary Clinton. You made three speeches for Goldman Sachs. You were paid $675,000. That's what they offered. 
absolvierte sie pro Tag einen oder zwei Wahlkampfauftritte. Hillary Clinton uh, attending a number of private fundraisers, building those campaign coffers. Hielt Trump big rallies in important swing states. Wahrscheinlich ist es kein gutes Zeichen, wenn Pappfiguren in den Wahlkampf geschickt werden. Her approval ratings are still underwater, and so better to send in either surrogates who are more popular or surrogates who can sort of fly under the radar and just visit with volunteers. Und am besten sollte der Autoaufkleber so klein sein, dass ihn niemand sieht. The American people that live outside the Beltway, that's the real America. That's the real people out there. And those are the real people who are going to go vote by the millions for Donald J. Trump. Real America sees what's going on here. What I would call the real America, which is working class. That people out here in real America think is crazy. Es scheint ein Missverständnis darüber zu geben, was das wahre Amerika ist. Hier eine Tatsache, die nie in der Zeitung stand, nie in den Abendnachrichten kam und bisher nie von uns ausgesprochen wurde. Die Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika sind ein linksgerichtetes Land. Es stimmt. Wir sind eine rockende, uns prügelnde, schwule, waffenfeindliche, multikulturelle, kiffende, baumumarmende, hip-hoppende, überall stillende, quinoa kochende, linksliberale Nation. Das sind die Fakten. Die Mehrheit der Amerikaner ist für das Recht auf Abtreibung, die gleiche Bezahlung von Frauen, strengere Umweltgesetze, legales Marihuana, einen höheren Mindestlohn, eine staatliche Krankenversicherung, kostenlose Ausbildung, kostenlose Kinderbetreuung, die Unterstützung von Gewerkschaften, Kürzung der Militärausgaben, eine Aufspaltung großer Banken. Die meisten Amerikaner besitzen keine Waffen. 75 Prozent finden, dass Immigration den USA gut tut. Und so weiter und so fort. In Texas sind die Weißen nicht mehr die Mehrheit. Houston hatte eine lesbische Bürgermeisterin. Texas verbindet man heute mit lesbisch. Die Ideen der 60er und 70er Jahre This is a meeting of American radicals. sind heute Überzeugungen. Put your whole face over that. Yes, there. Diese verrückten Mistkerle haben gesiegt. Und ich liebe den Geruch von ätherischen Ölen am Morgen. Wenn die linksliberalen Amerikaner in der Überzahl sind, warum haben sie dann rein gar keine Macht? Nicht im Weißen Haus, nicht im Senat, nicht im Unterhaus, nicht im obersten Gericht. In nur 8 der 50 Bundesstaaten haben Demokraten die volle Kontrolle. Aber in sechs der letzten sieben Präsidentschaftswahlen hatten die Demokraten die meisten tatsächlichen Wählerstimmen. Die Republikaner haben eigentlich nur einmal in den letzten 30 Jahren gewonnen. Diese traurige Zeremonie findet alle vier Jahre statt, wenn die Stimmen des Wahlausschusses in Babysärgen zum Kongress gebracht werden. Diese Stimmzettel sollte man wirklich vergraben, mitsamt dem Wahlausschuss. Er ist das letzte Relikt in der Verfassung, mit dem man vor mehr als 200 Jahren die Sklavenstaaten beschwichtigen wollte. Leute, können wir bitte damit aufhören? The Sergeant at Arms remove the protesters from the gallery. The chamber will be in order. The change will be in order. Es ist keine Demokratie, wenn der Kandidat mit den meisten Stimmen nicht gewinnt. Wenn die Amerikaner doch deutlich gemacht haben, dass die Demokraten regieren sollen, warum regieren sie dann nicht? I'm prepared to make a whole range of compromises. Compromise. 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 Well, we sat down and made a compromise. 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 And real compromises. Compromise. 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 God bless you, Speaker Dana. Wann fing das mit den vielen Kompromissen an? Als der letzte Präsident sagte, Make America great again. Nein, nicht der. We can make America great again. Er, Mr. Bill Clinton, der Mann aus Hope in Arkansas. 
In den 80ern und 90ern steckten Firmen viel Geld in republikanische Wahlkämpfe. Mit Erfolg. Währenddessen schrumpfte die Wählerschaft der Demokraten. Die Arbeiter waren so verloren, dass ihnen die Worte fehlten. Wie hätte man diesen Trend besser umkehren können, als den Republikanern nachzueifern? Bill Clinton sorgte dafür, dass massenhaft Afroamerikaner hinter Gitter kamen. Er deregulierte die Banken und verlagerte unter dem Deckmantel des Freihandels eine Million Jobs nach Mexiko. Er strich Sozialleistungen für die Armen und ging gegen gleichgeschlechtliche Ehen vor. Da fragt man sich verständlicherweise, warum man sich noch an Politik beteiligen sollte. 100 Millionen Menschen zogen daraus ihre Konsequenzen. Sie, die Nichtwähler Amerikas, waren die größte politische Gruppierung des Landes. Doch weder die Demokraten noch die Republikaner bemühten sich um sie. Die Demokraten näherten sich lieber inhaltlich den Republikanern an und die Zeitung des liberalen Establishments klatschte Beifall. Sie schrieb für große Unternehmen, redete Bewegungen wie Occupy Wall Street klein und bejubelte jeden Krieg, den die USA führten. We needed to go over to that part of the world. And what they needed to see was American boys and girls going house to house, from Basra to Baghdad, basically saying, suck on this. Die Zeitung versuchte auch Wahlen zu beeinflussen. Bernie Sanders' message resonates with a certain age group, his own. That's the headline. <laughs> When you read that now, after, you know, seeing what actually happened. Bernie, Bernie. Seeing Bernie in person and like hearing. The purpose of that article was to try to stop you. Michael, it was more than just that article. Look, we were a real threat to the liberal establishment. Because if you think that the New York Times or the Washington Post is really going to be talking about the issues that are important to working people in this country, are going to be talking about the need to take on the billionaire class, mm -hmm. you would be very mistaken. People believed Bernie, and, they, and he was sincere in what they he was They believed if saying. he got elected, he was going to do these things. Right. I was a big, big Bernie person, and Bernie won every single county in West Virginia. Counties? Yes. Every single county went for Bernie, and, and Mingo, Uh, Hillary came in third place behind somebody named Paul Farrell. I don't even know who that is, okay? Obwohl Bernie Sanders in allen 55 Counties von West Virginia gewonnen hatte und Hillary Clinton in keinem einzigen, erzählten die Demokraten von West Virginia den Amerikanern auf ihrem nationalen Parteitag diese Lüge. West Virginia! How do you count Madam votes? Secretary, 19 votes for the next president of the United States, Hillary Rodham Clinton, and 18 votes for Senator Bernie Sanders. Eine einzige Frau gab ihr Bestes, um ihr selbstgemachtes Schild in die Kamera zu halten, damit ihre Landsleute die Wahrheit lesen konnten. Die Demokraten in West Virginia hatten beschlossen, die Ergebnisse der innerparteilichen Vorwahl zu fälschen. Sie übergingen den Willen des Volkes und setzten ihre Lieblingsdelegierten ein, also Parteiloyalisten, ausgewählt von den Parteisoldaten. Das taten die Demokraten übrigens in allen Bundesstaaten. Indiana, Hillary, Rodham, Clinton, Michigan, Hillary. I move that the convention suspend the procedural rules and I move that Hillary Clinton be selected as the nominee of the Democratic Party for President of the United States. It 
was a betrayal. People were so disgusted with it. People left the Democratic Party. They just dim exited. This oh. just tells people to stay home. I think yeah. so. Don't bother. Bingo. Yes. Wenn Menschen immer wieder spüren, dass ihre Stimme nicht zählt, dass sie vollkommen egal ist, und wenn sie das verinnerlichen, wird dieser Vertrauensbruch zum Todesurteil für die Demokratie. Der starke Mann, der Autokrat, ist nur dann erfolgreich, wenn ein Großteil der Bevölkerung die Nase voll hat und aufgibt. Als in Flint protestiert wurde, hielten Snyder und seine Sprecher daran fest, über die Wasserkrise zu lügen. This is certainly a situation that deserves attention. I do not think that it rises to the level of a statewide emergency. Why not? Um, there's, there's just, um, it, the, we are here with the resources necessary to address the situation without that declaration. Uh, anyone who is concerned about lead in the drinking water in Flint can, can relax. Uh, there, there is no broad problem right now that we've seen with lead in the drinking water in Flint. Let's get the facts, let's keep working this, and let's remember, um, water isn't the only source of lead, and so we need to make sure we're encouraging people to look at other places that could create a threat. I actually started working for the health department in November of 2015. Das ist April Cook Hawkins. Sie sollte bei einer Vertuschungsaktion helfen. I was the case manager here in Flint, Michigan. All of the results in regards to the blood levels, I inputted those numbers and made sure all of those numbers were correct. Dabei wurde sie Zeugin, wie von Seiten der Regierung Dokumente gefälscht wurden. My supervisor asked if I would go in and um, help them out with the numbers and not show certain things. Because someone came in and they test high, the health department didn't want that number to be shown. Heimlich kopierte sie die Dokumente. Sie hatte Angst, sie jemandem zu zeigen, bis sie damit zu mir kam. Is this an actual document that you kept as a piece of evidence? Yes. The so. normal number is 3.5, and anything over 3.5 is considered a high lead level. Six, six, five, six, five, five, six, seven, ten, six, eight, six, six, fourteen. Not a single number that says 3.5 or lower. No. That means every child on this sheet of paper has an elevated level of lead. Yeah. And I said, so let's just call the parents and retest. And they said, no, we can't do that. Just put them in as a 3.5 then. And so the parents aren't able to start taking immediate action to help the child that's been lead poisoned. They think their child is fine. And they, ah. Oh. My, my child tested low. You knew these parents were getting letters that were not telling the truth. Correct. Just put them in as a 3.5 then. And you said? I said, no, I couldn't do it. And that's when things kind of hit the fan for me. Somebody told somebody to do this, to cover up what the state was really up to. Yes. I look at the lifestyles of the kids that's being born into this. You know what they know? They know a bottle of water and, and a toothbrush and toothpaste is normal. That's how I brush my teeth in Iraq. I took bottled water showers in Iraq. So I compare how I live now, how I lived in Iraq as far as when it comes to water. I had more water supply in Iraq than I did now. And we need to not have the highest water bills in the nation, especially since Michigan has 85% of the nation's fresh surface water, 20% of the world. You know, then there's people who have to choose between their water bill or medication, water bill or child care, water bill or car note, water bill or rent. When you have the highest uh, water rates in the nation and the poorest city in the nation statistically, who has time to protest? You may want to, but you have to feed your family. Durch diese Katastrophe ist Flint zu einem Gefängnis geworden. Niemand wollte mehr dorthin ziehen. Folglich konnte niemand die Stadt verlassen. If I was going to describe Flint to someone from out of the state that had never been here, I would uh, let them know that we have a very, uh, a very good um, 
Uh... So that is usually the most common question. People say, why don't you just move? Would you buy my house for what I owe on it? Unfortunately, this water crisis could be almost the final nail in the coffin for Flint. Dann starben Menschen an der Legionärskrankheit. This outbreak of Legionnaires was one of the highest in the country, and it was directly related to the water crisis. Das ist die Familie des in Flint geborenen NBA-Stars Roy Marble. Seine Mutter ist an Legionellen gestorben. Mit ihnen hat sie sich durch verseuchtes Wasser im Krankenhaus von Flint infiziert. And I miss her so much. I do. And I wish that this day I would have just taken my mom to Ed Armour. I wish I would have. I wish I would have. And they knew what was going on. That's the sad part about it. They knew what was going on. President of the United States here. We need federal help. We need FEMA. We need we need the EPA. We need the CDC, and we need the Army Corps of Engineers. What did you know, and when did you know it? You're asking three questions now. Okay, and that goes to your point about being civil. In many respects, you haven't been the most civil about this whole situation. And I'm always happy to answer questions. We stayed here to answer additional questions. And we're trying to be open and transparent. Er ist alles andere als offen und transparent gewesen. Erst durch die American Civil Liberties Union erfuhr die Öffentlichkeit, dass der Gouverneur den Giftskandal von Flint fast anderthalb Jahre lang vertuscht hat. We've been to homes like Saturday and one today where the windows, there's holes in the windows and there's little like young children, they've got like a little blanket around them and many of them have fallen on hard times. I saw two babies shivering and I'm bringing a bottle of water and the mother thinks I'm like the second coming. You know what my thought was? You know what my thought was? I thought that son of a bitch. That's what I thought, to do that, to do that to yeah. our people. Right, right, right. He should be charged criminally. Once he was advised by his chief of staff that the water had lead levels above what was acceptable, and he continued to the program, didn't bring it to anyone's attention, any of his administrators, in fact, fought it, that makes it an intentional act. So for every hour after he knew that that water was essentially poisoning these children. Whether it's a whether criminal act. I think it's a criminal act. Keine Terrororganisation wusste bis zu diesem Zeitpunkt, wie man es schafft, eine ganze amerikanische Stadt zu vergiften. Dafür brauchte es die Republikaner von Michigan und ihren Gouverneur. Es war höchste Zeit, meiner Bürgerpflicht nachzukommen. Ah, uh, hier der Governor's Office. Okay, just hold on a minute. All right. Yeah, All right, yeah, I know. Hey, hey, 
Communicator. Ari Adler, Governor oh. Structure Communications. Oh, great. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Well, you so, um, well, I'm here uh, to make a citizen's arrest of the governor, and I'm wondering if you could help facilitate that uh, for me. Okay, no, the governor's um, not here. For poisoning the people of Flint. Well. Knowingly poisoning the people of Flint. There were mistakes made. Uh, there was a water crisis in Flint. Mm -hmm. Water quality in Flint mm -hmm. is now testing uh, well below uh, any kind of action level at the federal level. So the water is safe? Some, well, some of the current uh, tests are currently showing that it's actually testing better than bottled water. Better than bottled water. I actually have a glass of water here from the city of Flint. I brought with me all the way from Flint. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is uh, great water, would you mind drinking it right now? Uh, I'm not going to just drink a glass of water that I don't know where it came from. I just told you it came from Flint. If, if you'd like information or, or whatever, you don't, I can do You think this water is still poisoned? I do not think that at all. Governor Snyder? Hello? Hello? Hi? It's Michael Moore. Are you home? He's not coming out. All right. Let's hose him down. Governor Snyder, you're not much of a provider, cause Flint ain't fixed. Jedes einzelne Kind in Flint. Flint ain't fixed. Hat Blei getrunken. Flint ain't fixed. Zehntausend Kinder wurden vergiftet. Flint ain't fixed. <laughs> the children up there are sick. The lead in the water is thick. Flint ain't fixed! I wasn't born here, and we came to this country very much for that American dream. Um, and, you know, with nothing besides education, you know, my, my dad was a GM employee, my mom was a teacher, benefited from, you know, union contracts, um, sent their kids to two, you know, to Michigan's public schools. Um, the American dream worked for us. It worked for me and my family the way that it does not work for the kids that I take care of in my clinic every day. They are literally waking up to a nightmare, a nightmare of injustice, poverty, lost democracy. And that is another lesson we need to learn from Flint. Maybe that's why it's called a dream, because it's not a reality for everybody. <laughs> no, it's not. Right? No, there are multiple Americas. You decided to People are scared of a challenge. You deploy because your nation sends you to these places. And then one day you come home and you realize it was all a lie. Our town is dying. One out of every four homes is an abandoned, dilapidated structure, and you get told, keep picking up trash and let leaders do what leaders do. Elected leaders in our towns, in our, uh, in our states, in our country, absolutely are self-serving. They have no idea of what it's like for a single parent to put food on the table for her child. You know, you come home and you realize that I, I can take you five minutes from here and show you where kids have it worse than the kids I saw in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm. So that's why I come back here and I started speaking up for the things that I believe in and I will not shut up for nobody. And I don't give a shit who you are, I'll fight you in the damn street right now. Okay, um, um. I'm sick and tired of people telling me that America is the greatest country because we can whip your ass. It, I mean, we, we don't have health care for everybody, we don't have that. 
We have homelessness that's everywhere. We have an opioid epidemic that has absolutely destroyed uh, 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 our communities, has killed more people last year than all the lives lost in the Vietnam War. And we're not willing to go to war against Big Pharma. How come we don't have more people like you on our side? We Democrats. do. Uh, let me tell you something. There are many of people out Where there. Where are they? My name's Alexandria. I'm running for Congress here. Yeah. I looked at the match between our representation, our community, the special interests that are that are kind of hurting what's going on here. And then I looked around and saw that this seat hadn't been challenged in 14 years. It really just felt like if nobody's gonna do it, then I gotta do it. <laughs> My name is Rashida Tlaib. I'm running for the US Congress. I'm running to become their next congressman in the midterm elections. I'm here doing this because listening to the speeches at the Women's March inspired me. I'm a professional backyard chicken farmer. I had never run before. And you're an author? Uh, it's just a how-to book called My Pet Chicken. In the back I have recipes. I believe that in a modern, moral, and wealthy society, no person in America should be too poor to live. That's what I think. Her views, her policy positions are actually downright scary. Let's see, single payer, universal health care, universal jobs, government subsidized housing, free colleges. She wants to abolish ICE and of course impeach President Trump. I don't think he knows how to deal with a girl from the Bronx. People always say, you gotta wait your turn, Rashida. And I was like, what turn? I didn't know there was a line. I'm actually running for Congress. Hi, sweetie. You probably also see me uh, get kicked out of the Trump rally. Donald Trump was coming. He was less than a couple miles from my house. We found out that the Detroit Economic Club was not going to allow questions. First time ever in history. Well, we were taken aback by that. Why can't we ask questions? Detroit so 12 women came there and every two minutes interrupted. In terms of violent crime. Asking questions about what is the stance on labor organizing? What's the stance on sexual harassment? Today I will outline my economic vision. In the coming weeks, My campaign is about reaching out to everyone as Americans and returning to a government that puts the American people first. My question was, have you read the Constitution? What part of the Constitution? That was the most American thing I could have done. A lot of my colleagues said, oh, it's a little too aggressive. A Democratic state senator called and said, do you think that was really necessary? And two of my Republican colleagues were like, really proud of you, girl. You know, I don't agree with everything, but good for you. There's a sense of respect, ironically, from the other side for the way I approach issues. Eine Sache stand eindeutig fest. These candidates were Kämpfer. People deserve someone who are going to fight for the people and not for corporations. To be able to encourage someone to run for office, man, it is truly the lack of political will from our Democrats. And their backbone is literally just missing, right? And you put both of those components together, and then on top of that, you're taking money from the same folks the Republicans are taking money from. The Democratic Party should be recruiting extraordinary, ordinary Americans that actually get on the same bus as their constituents. Actually have kids in those public schools and understand what it feels like for a teacher not to get paid real salaries or lack of resources, right? The definition of electoral insanity is trying to reelect these same guys over and over again and expecting our country to be any different. For the first time, Democrats will have an all-female statewide ticket. And on that list, Rashida Tlaib, she is poised to become the first Muslim woman in Congress. We're not ready to give up on the party. We're just ready to take it over. And let's put some people in there that get it because we felt the Take pain. it over. Take it over. Mm. Take it over, Michael. Die Übernahme wurde eingeleitet. Es gab hunderte, wenn nicht tausende rebellische Kandidaten. Viele von ihnen Frauen. Sie traten nicht nur gegen die Republikaner an. Sie mussten es auch mit dem Establishment der Demokraten aufnehmen, das ihnen so viele Niederlagen eingebracht hatte. 
Diese alte Garde wollte die Kandidaten moderat und in der politischen Mitte halten. Sie sollten keinen Staub aufwirbeln. In anderen Worten, sie sollten verlieren. 51% of people between 18 and 29 no longer support the system of capitalism. Well, I thank you for your question, uh, but I have to say we're capitalist. And that's just the way it is. Mit wir sind Kapitalisten, meint sie damit ihre Wähler? Oder meint sie nicht vielmehr die Leute, die die demokratische Partei finanzieren? Das Establishment der Demokraten mobilisierte Freunde bei den Medien, um die Revolution in der Partei zu stoppen. I think the party moved too far to the left. Much farther to the left and out of touch with working class voters. And if her win makes her into uh, what Kellyanne Conway called the new face of the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party is not going to have a, a very bright future. Der größte Schaden wurde hinter verschlossenen Türen angerichtet, wo die Parteispitze ihr Bestes gab, um die Hoffnungen derjenigen zu begraben, die wirklich wollten, dass die Demokraten siegen. Das ist der Demokrat Levi Tilleman aus Colorado. Er kandidierte für den Kongress. Er hatte Probleme, weil die Parteispitze einen moderaten, handverlesenen Kandidaten unterstützte. Darum suchte Tilleman das Gespräch mit Stanley Hoyer, der Nummer zwei der Demokraten im Repräsentantenhaus, und zeichnete es auf. Es öffnete ihm die Augen. These like super high priced lawyers came rolling into the Board of Elections demanding to pull our files, looking through every single one, yeah, Democratic Party. looking through to see who they could bump off. I'm running a grassroots campaign. I'm not accepting money from big pharma and big energy. You know, my team, I have received messages from people all over America that says, who's running your campaign? And when I tell them, they are floored. What do you mean by who's? What you mean, like, who's your campaign director, your finance director? My campaign manager drives a truck across, he's a cross-country truck driver. Right now, he's in North Carolina driving a truck. I mean, that's his full-time job. And he's another person that will fist fight you in the street for what he believes in. No, I, now I have to fight two of you in the street. Fuck, come on, you guys. <laughs> it's how we rolled out here in West Virginia. Man muss kein Soldat gewesen sein, um Kampfgeist zu besitzen. Manchmal sind diejenigen am mutigsten, von denen man es am wenigsten erwartet. When you're a teacher in West Virginia, you're so much more than a teacher. We're social workers. Mm -hmm. We're mothers. I know last year I teach seniors. There were eight students in my class that had me in their cell phone as mom. That was how I was listed in their contact. So, as mom? Mom. Yes. You are the mother figure because their mother abandoned them five years ago. Their mother died of a drug overdose. I've had all of these situations that's happened. But we still live paycheck to paycheck simply because we don't make hardly any money. Das Lehrergehalt in West Virginia liegt auf Platz 48 von 50. Einige Lehrer leben unterhalb der Armutsgrenze. Sie sind berechtigt, Essensmarken zu beziehen. I think every teacher in West Virginia knows several that's in that situation. Die Essensmarken waren noch nicht die Spitze des Eisbergs. Ihre Krankenversicherungsbeiträge sollten sich verdoppeln. They also started this thing called Go365. It's a kind of a wellness program. Go what? Introducing Go365. Um überhaupt krankenversichert zu werden, zwang man die Lehrer, ein Fitbit-Gerät zu kaufen und zu tragen. Die Fitnessuhr sollte ihre körperliche Aktivität ständig überwachen. Wer die Online-Datenbank nicht mit genügend Schritten fütterte, 
then you pay a $500 penalty at the end of the year. You know how weird this sounds? Like how darkly strange and wrong? Yes. Yes. Und wer steckt dahinter dieser Idee? Ein Mann, dessen Name eigentlich Gerechtigkeit verspricht. Gouverneur Jim Justice. Nobody loves education more than me. Nobody loves our teachers more than me. Tonight in Pineville, a meeting was held to discuss changes to the Public Employees Insurance Agency. Wenn die Fitnessuhren messen könnten, wie angepisst diese Lehrer sind, würden sie jetzt aufleuchten. Der Vorstand der Lehrergewerkschaft war leider keine Hilfe. Er lehnte einen staatsweiten Streik in West Virginia ab. Our union reps, they've told us about all the risks. We could lose our job, we could lose our seniority, we could lose a day's pay, we could lose all these things. I just said, guys, listen, the eyes of West Virginia are on us right now. If we can just have the courage to step out, other counties will follow. This was the chilly scene outside Point Harmony Elementary Friday morning. Upwards of 50 teachers lining the sidewalk, all on a mission. Die Lehrer beschlossen, den Streik allein durchzuziehen. Von Schulbezirk zu Schulbezirk. All Mingo County is on the courthouse steps. People are chanting, we're Facebook live streaming that, and other counties are commenting on there and saying, I wish I was there. It escalated really quickly. So four go out, then seven go out. And then 55 of 55 counties. The strike will go on in all of them tomorrow. It is unlawful to have a work stoppage. The teachers were warned the strike is illegal. They face anything from being fined, being fired, to going to jail. Sie nahmen das Gefängnis in Kauf, um ihre Ziele zu erreichen. 5% mehr Gehalt und eine Krankenversicherung ohne Fitbits. Die Lehrer waren nicht allein. Die Busfahrer und anderes Schulpersonal streikten ebenfalls. Es gab nur ein Problem. Über die Hälfte der Schüler in West Virginia bekam Frühstück und Mittagessen in der Schule. Also sorgten die Lehrer während des Streiks selbst für die Verpflegung. The group not only packed the bags, but also hand delivered them to each student's home. Oh, Make no mistake about it, they want the voice of the working class citizens to be gone. If you are not a member of a labor union, you better become one. If you notice, many days they had red bandanas wrapped around their necks, mm -hmm. and they're proud of that. Die Bedeutung der Tücher reicht in die 1920er Jahre zurück. Damals legten zehntausende Kohlekumpel ihre Arbeit nieder. Sie trugen rote Halstücher, um ihre Sympathie mit der Gewerkschaft auszudrücken und machten den Begriff Redneck populär. And you might think it might be a derogatory term, but from where we're from, that is a term of pride. That says we will not back down. The labor unions across this country needs to take up the red bandana and needs to put them around their necks and say we are tired of being overlooked, mistreated, underpaid, overworked, understaffed. We're tired of it. Public schools in West Virginia will remain closed today. The third day of a statewide strike by teachers and other school employees will be closed tomorrow for a fourth day. Already lasted five days. Wie wahre Rednecks blieben die Lehrer standhaft. Those people in that Capitol right now wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them teachers. Doch die Gewerkschaftsbosse schlossen einen faulen Kompromiss. We believe the best course of action at this time is to return to school tomorrow. Sie holten weniger raus, als die Lehrer gefordert hatten. Und ließen die Busfahrer und die Kantinenfrauen im Regen stehen. It's a band-aid on a shotgun wound. Die Lehrer lehnten ab. Sie bestanden auf eine gleichwertige Gehaltserhöhung für die Busfahrer und setzten ihren Streit fort. Leben stark, Tag für Tag. Nach neun Tagen des Streiks und Twisted Sister Gesängen 
bekamen die Lehrer die geforderte Gehaltserhöhung. Nicht nur für sich selbst, auch für die Busfahrer, die Kantinenfrauen und alle anderen. Und die Fitnessuhren? Die waren per se. The moment we won, we celebrated for like five minutes and then we put the rest of the nation on notice. And it's starting to spread all over Kentucky. Arizona, North Carolina. Oklahoma is pissed off. Now on Monday, teachers right here in Colorado will join in the walkouts. When working class people come together and say, we're not leaving until you give us what we want, there's no money or, or anything more powerful than that. And that's why politicians since the beginning of this country, they have tried to divide people by race or gender. Right. And so that's the Republicans do it, but you know what, the Democrats do it too. The Democrats say that the concerns of the people here don't have anything to do with the concerns of the people in Flint, Michigan, and that's bullshit. All right, so here's the plan. I'm gonna go take an Uber in the afternoon before 2.40. From there, I'll go into the school campus, load my bags, and get my an AR-15 and a couple tracer rounds. Wait, and people will die. Location is Stone Douglas in Parkland, Florida. Und wie jedes Mal kamen die Gedanken und Gebete. Thoughts and prayers. And our thoughts and prayers. In our thoughts and prayers. Quote, our thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Our thoughts and prayers. Our continued thoughts and prayers go out to all. Wieder wurde gefordert, die Schießereien nicht zu einem Politikum zu machen. Doch ein paar Jugendliche hatten es satt. Sie machten den Fall zu einem Politikum, weil er ein Politikum war. In response to President Trump, I would say this. You want to look back on our history and blame the Democrats? That's disgusting. You're the president. You're supposed to bring this nation together, not divide us. How dare you? Children are dying, and their blood is on your hands because of that. I'm going to happily ask him how much money he received from the National Rifle Association. the generations before us, we sincerely accept your apology. And we, we, we appreciate that you are willing to let us rebuild the world that you fucked up. Diese mutigen Teenager entfachten ein Lauffeuer. Und schon einen Monat nach der Schießerei fand ein landesweiter Protestmarsch statt. Doch dieser Direktor wollte seine Schüler nicht vom Schulgelände lassen. They can't expel everyone here because that's insane. Wesley, you may go back the second period. We were able to go because so many people, you, there's one person can't stop at least over 500 kids. Wesley, middle school, you may go back the second period at Wesley. Die Kinder hatten von der Macht gekostet und wussten nun, dass Erwachsene eigentlich nur nichtsnutzige Langweiler sind. We want change! We want change! Das war eine ehrliche politische Bewegung. Ich war dabei und habe sie mir angesehen. Die Schüler aus Parkland luden mich sogar in ihr geheimes Hauptquartier ein. Ich 
think it's just insane to think that within a month of this happening, the pace that we've gone at, we have an international NGO that we're running out of an office space in the same city now. Running, two students. Being run by 23 walking hormones with probably a lot of ADD in between. Ich weiß nicht, ob es an den Hormonen lag oder am ADS, aber ihr Protestmarsch ging durch die Decke. What's up to? It's at 820. Yesterday was at like 760 something. That's like several more marches in a day. My generation, the generation after me, maybe we did one thing right. We raised you. Well, on the contrary, <laughs> social media raised us. Yes. My phone. Yeah. And like, you see it like... And communicating with other young people yeah. Yeah. about you what the real like... truth is. Yeah, yeah exactly. One of the fake news networks, CNN, last night was saying, I want teachers to have guns. I don't want teachers to have guns. I want certain highly adept people, people that understand weaponry, guns. Uh, if 20 percent of the teachers have guns, it may be 10 percent or maybe 40 percent, we need to let people know, you come into our schools, you're going to be dead, and it's going to be fast. This is about us demanding change, and this is about the fact that we have already won. It's just a matter of when. From Aktivismus gepackt, fuhren die Schüler dorthin, wo Veränderungen eigentlich gemacht werden sollen. Zum State Capitol in Tallahassee. Einem der wenigen Orte in Florida, wo man vor Waffen sicher ist. He's not, he didn't even reach 18 years old yet. He was a boy who got shot in the head because of your law saying that an 18-year-old boy can carry a military A weapon to kill. Die Schüler waren perfekt vorbereitet. Einige der Politiker nicht so sehr. You can shoot as many bullets with a handgun as you can with these rifles. But civilians with such high capacity magazines, do you support that? When you say high capacity magazines, that's the number of bullets. Yeah, I've heard um, different uh, positions on that. All we want is an answer as to how are we going to fix this and continue our life not living in fear. Yeah, it's. Uh... It's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot. It's going to be multifaceted bullet points of coming in from all kinds of, of different angles. Government is set up to move slow, okay? There's committees, there's, there's uh, dual houses. It's not like cutting grass. Cutting grass, you can immediately turn around and see this is the product of, of what I've done. But uh, What's your personal stance on assault style weapons like an AR-15? Yeah, it's uh, it's a head scratcher where we are. So uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a debate. I, I've always uh, defended people's right to defend themselves. Uh, I haven't got specifics, so you're asking me specifics yet, Jake, and I I don't know. But I schnell wurde klar, einen Politiker um Hilfe zu bitten, der eine 1 plus von der Waffenvereinigung bekommt, führt zu nichts. Man muss sie direkt herausfordern. Senator Rubio. Can you tell me right now that you will not accept a single donation from the NRA in the future? I, there, that, that is the wrong way to look. First of all, the answer is people buy into my agenda. You can say Number no. second, well, I, so, I... Oder man wählt die Regierenden ab. Obwohl man noch zu jung zum Wählen ist. I get tweets from people. They're like, hey, I'm a mom from Tennessee. I've never voted before, but I'm gonna vote now. Yeah. So you're getting so people that are non-voters yes. are telling you I'm gonna vote. At all these marches, we're having booths to register yourself to vote. Because we know that we're gonna be the generation that are going to vote those people out. Zum Beispiel diesen Typen. Maine Republican Leslie Gibson, running unopposed for state representative, tweeted about a Parkland shooting survivor, calling her a skinhead lesbian. They're already down, and he knocked them even down more by saying that. That wasn't very nice of him. Nach Gibsons Hasskommentar rief David Hawk auf Twitter zu Gegenmaßnahmen auf. Und tatsächlich? In District 57, there's a candidate who was unopposed. He now has competition. 28-year-old. Aaron Gilchrist of Green submitting the necessary amount of signatures required by the Secretary of State's office to run. Dann passierte das. Guys, 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 guys. Breaking news. The guy who called Emma a skinhead lesbian who was running unopposed as of like a day ago. Yes. And we dropped out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did it! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> she had just met the deadline at five o'clock yeah. in Maine yesterday yeah. to run against this asshole. I just can't believe that it was a day. It, it was, was literally a day. day. Literally. It's like, Both Emma and I failed uh, two psych tests today. Oh no. But it's fine. We're changing the world. Like in hindsight, I'm not gonna care about that. Yeah. What I'm gonna remember about this day is getting that woman in Maine, like pretty much in office. Yeah, not your psych test. Yeah. Ein anderer denkwürdiger Tag war dieser. Welcome to the revolution. Das hatten die Jugendlichen allein organisiert. Auf der Bühne durften keine Erwachsenen sprechen. Als in den Vereinigten Staaten über 700 Märsche stattfanden und weitere 100 weltweit. So viele Demonstrationen an einem Tag hatte es in den USA noch nie gegeben. Raleigh, North Carolina, Tampa, Florida, Central Los Angeles, all echoing the same message. Und wenn eine Botschaft dringend genug ist, kommt manchmal auch Hilfe. City of Flint, USA, May 5th, 2016. POTUS has arrived. Die Menschen in Flint hatten einen letzten Hoffnungsschimmer. We were all invited to this big thing where the President Obama was going to speak to us about the problem. Oh my gosh, this is so cool! Oh yes! Once he see, he can make a conscious decision to push this with urgency. Während Obama zum Veranstaltungsort fuhr, versuchte Gouverneur Snyder die Stimmung anzuheizen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I understand why you're angry and frustrated. Not like we do. I want to come here today to apologize. Too late. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. We already sick. We have a short-term water crisis that needs to be repaired. Flint's recovery is everybody's responsibility. And I'm going to make sure that responsibility is met. That's why I'm here, to tell you directly that I see you and I hear you. <laughs> we invest. Uh, can, can I get some water? Come on up there. I want a glass of water. Get a bottle. A bottle of water. I want a glass of water. Everybody settle down. This is a feisty crowd. Thank you. I really did need a glass of water. This is not a stunt. What? He, he wet his lips. He did not drink it. He didn't sip it. He wet his lips. There was an audible gasp in the audience. People were just like absolutely dejected. Why would you do that? I, I am sure that somewhere when I was two years old, I was taking a chip of paint, tasting it, and I got some lead. Yeah, that's like talking about like, well, I didn't wear a seatbelt and I'm fine. It's like, but there were tons of people that died. Hinter den Kulissen saß der Präsident mit dem kriminellen Gouverneur an einem Tisch und beschloss seinen Trick zu wiederholen. You know, generally I have not been doing stunts here, but you know. <laughs> that's not what I expected. That's right. what Snyder did. It felt like he minimized like what people were actually going through and struggling with. If you were actually lead poisoned, you would not be president, you would be janitor Barack Obama. 
We were holding on to hope that he would declare a disaster area. A disaster would give us FEMA. It would give us pipe replacement, get engineers in, a, in here. Then we could get Medicare for all the residents of Flint. As soon as he took a drink of the water and said everything's fine, that was that. Was that. And look at it, years later, it's still poison. When he came here, it was my president. But when he left, he was not my president. I would, again, go back to the president's visit last week. He reinforced the message that filtered water has been determined to be safe for people to drink. This, again, was our hero, and we thought he was going to come here and help us. But they do have a mural of him, and you ride past it now, and his head is busted out. It was devastating and it depressed the vote. And I know people that stayed home and just said to hell with all of them. And I, I don't know, I just don't, I don't know. But to, but to I don't know why, I don't know why anybody would have advised him to do that, and I don't know why I would do it. And to the average person then, then the Democrats don't look like the people who are gonna come to the rescue. Right. So in Flint, the number is something like 8,000 African-American voters who voted twice for Obama chose not to vote. Hillary lost in Michigan by two votes per precinct on average. Two votes per precinct. 10,000 and some votes was it. So where are we left? Yeah. President Obama's schlimmste Tat war jedoch, Donald Trump den Weg zu ebnen. Denn der ist nicht einfach vom Himmel gefallen. Trumps Aufstieg ist das Ergebnis jahrzehntelanger verfehlter Politik. Unter Obama wurden mehr Whistleblower inhaftiert als unter allen vorherigen Präsidenten zusammen. Er ließ Zivilisten von Drohnen bombardieren. Und er deportierte eine Rekordzahl von Immigranten und Flüchtlingen. Obama hätte in Flint veranlassen müssen, dass die Bleirohre ausgewechselt werden. Doch anstatt das Ingenieurkorps dorthin zu schicken, schickte er die Armee. Das ist nicht normal in Flint. Das geht down wie ein Motherfucker. Michigan. It was like boom. Didn't warn nobody in the neighborhood. Oh god, this is so insane. And it freaked me out. Obamas Verteidigungsministerium fasste den Entschluss, Flint zu einem Truppenübungsplatz zu machen, um die Soldaten auf Kriege in urbanen Gebieten vorzubereiten. What are you guys doing this training for? Uh, it's just uh, to conduct some realistic training. Niemand warnte die Bewohner von Flint, dass sie zur Zielscheibe werden würden. A few things broke in our house. Uh, glass started to fall off the table and stuff. What are we going to do? Everybody better fucking get ready. What is it? What organization are you a part of? I'm part of the United States Army. U.S. Army! In what other part of this city would they have did this without notifying the people? Why are they doing this in Flint? Like, why here? Probably because the availability of uh, the abandoned buildings. 12, 11 a.m. In the city of Flint. In the city of Flint. See that? Coming to an American city near you. Because if it can happen in Flint, it can happen anywhere. Where in Flint to Hause is, definiert Terrorismus völlig anders. Er war 2016 der einzige Kandidat unter Demokraten und Republikanern, der den Ort des Verbrechens besucht hat. Vielleicht wollte er das Werk seines Parteikollegen Rick Snyder bewundern. Jemand hat Trump einmal gefragt, wie gehen Sie damit um, im Fokus der Medien zu stehen? Wie schaffen sie es, sich im Sturm zu halten?
Er blickte auf und sagte, ich bin der Sturm. Ich bin der Sturm. Bekanntermaßen kann nur einer den Sturm beherrschen. Derjenige, der ihn erschaffen hat. Der Rest von uns muss Schutz suchen. Thank you very much. You folks are in here. Place is packed. There are lines that go back six blocks. There is such love in this country for everything we stand for. You saw that on Election Day. And you're going to see it more and more. So we're all part of this very historic movement, a movement the likes of which, actually, the world has never seen before. Often the move is to say, you're making a comparison to Hitler. It's not a perfect comparison. And therefore, let's throw all of history out. Whereas what I would say is, of course, the comparison's not perfect. No comparison's ever perfect. History doesn't repeat. But history is this huge resource of patterns. It's this huge resource of structures. It's a way to try to get your bearings in a moment like the present one, where we're not really sure what's going on. Sie hatten eine der liberalsten Demokratien der Welt. Sie waren das erste Land mit einer Krankenversicherung für alle Bürger. Sie haben nicht nur die Druckerpresse erfunden, sie lasen auch mehr Bücher als jede andere Nation. In vielen ihrer Städte gab es ein Dutzend Tageszeitungen. Die Presse war stark und frei. Außerdem drehten sie die besten Filme. Sie waren Vorreiter in Kunst, Kultur und Wissenschaft und galten als das intelligenteste Volk der Erde. Im November 1932 wählten sie einen österreichischen Einwanderer zu ihrem Führer. Er hatte keine politische Erfahrung und redete nicht wie die etablierten Politiker. Er nannte die Dinge einfach beim Namen. Wie erfrischend! Die Frauen liebten ihn, Kinder freuten sich, ihn zu treffen und Tiere hatte er besonders gern. Look what Hitler dines on, not even soup for the ascetic vegetarian, just a couple of crackers for a victory banquet. Er erzählte Witze und Anekdoten, er war ein großartiger Tänzer. Er wollte, dass Deutschland an erster Stelle steht. Und als deutsche Fußballer während der Nationalhymne keinen Respekt zeigten, wurden sie bestraft. Er versprach Arbeitsplätze für alle und ließ Straßen und Infrastruktur bauen und Lager. Außerdem nutzte er die neuen Medien für sich, Radiosendungen und die Wochenschau. 1935 startete er seinen eigenen Fernsehsender, vier Jahre bevor es das Fernsehen in den USA gab. Heil Hitler! Er wusste sogar, wie man Fake News verbreitet. Im Lager Juden von verschiedenen Berufen haben die Gelegenheit, ihr Berufsleben wieder aufzunehmen. Menschen versammelten sich in Massen, um ihn zu sehen. Doch seine Nazi-Partei gewann nur 32 Prozent der Sitze im Reichstag. Die liberalen Parteien und die Kommunisten hatten die Mehrheit der Stimmen. Ein Problem für Hitler. Wenige Wochen nach seiner Ernennung zum Kanzler geschah ein Terroranschlag. Jemand legte im Reichstagsgebäude Feuer. Viele glaubten, die Nazis hätten es in Brand gesetzt, um einen Notstand heraufzubeschwören. Hitler beschuldigte die Kommunisten. Die KPD wurde verboten, ihre Sitze im Parlament annullierte man. Die Liberalen wurden bezwungen und die Öffentlichkeit unterstützte Adolf Hitler, der die Kontrolle übernahm. Diese jüdische Wochenzeitung veröffentlichte einen Leitartikel, der die Leser dazu aufrief, Ruhe zu bewahren. Nun, da die Nazis an der Macht sind, glauben wir nicht, dass Herr Hitler und seine Freunde alle ihre Versprechen umsetzen. Sie werden den Juden nicht ihre verfassungsmäßigen Rechte wegnehmen. Sie werden uns nicht in Ghettos sperren und den Mob auf uns hetzen. Sie können es nicht tun, weil die Verfassung es verbietet. Die New York Times stimmte in diesen Tenor ein. Sie versicherte den Amerikanern, 
dass alles nur halb so schlimm sei. In ihren Artikeln wurde Hitlers Antisemitismus heruntergespielt. Dieser sei gar nicht so neu und so brutal, wie es hieß. Und Hitler benutze den Antisemitismus nur als Köder, um Anhänger um sich zu scharen. When you track how people first reacted to Hitler and Mussolini, they said, oh, he's just insane. Or the classic thing is that the elite party, in this case, the GOP, we're going to invite him into power, and then we're going to control him. How am I doing? Am I doing okay? I'm president. <laughs> hey, I'm president. Can you believe it, right? Over and over in history, what has happened is that these people get invited in, they get legitimized, and then they take over the show. There is no Republican Party. There's a Trump party. Um 12.05 Uhr am 20. Januar 2017, nur Minuten nach seiner Vereidigung. So help me God. Unterzeichnete Trump die Verträge für den Wahlkampf im Vorfeld der Wahl 2020. Wenige Tage später setzte er seine Kundgebungen fort. Keep America great! Exclamation point und warb für eine achtjährige Präsidentschaft. Unless they give me an extension for the presidency. These are what I call trial balloons. You throw out an idea that previously was unthinkable. Four years, eight years, or as you know, FDR, in one case, 16 years. Should we go back to 16 years? Should we do that? Congressman, can we have that extended? Unthinkable in democracy or unthinkable for human rights reasons. She is a great gentleman. He's now president for life. <laughs> president for life. No, he's great. He's, hey, look, he was able to do that. I think it's great. Maybe we'll have to give that a shot someday. <laughs> they float these ideas. They get them out there. And then the press does its job for him. President Trump offering his congratulations to Turkey's President Erdogan for winning a referendum that grants him sweeping new powers. Picks them up, amplifies them, circulates. And then it becomes a thing. You know, the last time I jokingly said that, 16 years, the papers started saying, he's got despotic tendencies. No, I'm not looking to do it. Unless you want to do it, that's OK. And it becomes part of the discourse. Half of all Republicans in a poll said they would agree to postpone the 2020 election if President Trump asked them to. 52% of Republicans would support postponing the 2020 election if Trump proposed it. Oh and he hasn't God. even proposed it. People do think, well, we have this democracy. We've had it for over 200 years. It's not going anywhere. But that's so bogus. That's just not true, Michael. We've had, we've had a democracy since circa 1970. I mean, if black people can't vote, it's not really democracy. If women can't vote, it's not really democracy. Democracy, I mean, I, I love the fact that I live in a country which is more democratic than others. But I will say that democracy in America is an aspiration. It's somewhere we've got to get. I mean, when only half the population is, is, is voting, when there's unlimited money in politics, we're not there yet. Over one million new jobs, companies investing billions in America, stock market reaching all-time record highs. Our country strong again. America Noch nie in der Geschichte der USA hat ein Präsident in seinen ersten zwei Jahren mehr Versprechen eingelöst. Nicht die Versprechen gegenüber den Wählern, aber seine Versprechen gegenüber Milliardären und der herrschenden Klasse. Steuergeschenke für die Reichen. Schluss mit Obamacare. It's obvious that it's failing. It's dead. Regeln für Banken wurden entschärft oder außer Kraft gesetzt. Doesn't get much bigger than that, right? Gerade ist er dabei, 140 konservative Bundesrichter zu ernennen. A modern day record. Und nominiert rechtskonservative Richter für den Supreme Court. Das Pariser Klimaabkommen. Will withdraw. Der Atomdeal mit dem Iran. Will withdraw. Eine Versöhnung mit Kuba. I am canceling. Private Gefängnisse. Whose stock has nearly doubled. Privatisierung öffentlicher Schulen. Und er baut die Mauer. We want to make it perfecto. We shall establish beyond the realm of doubt facts which before the dark decade of the Third Reich would have seemed incredible. I had a defendant who killed 90,000 Jews and I asked him, why did you do that? And he said, Hitler knew more than I did and he told me the Jews were planning to attack 
as a matter of self-defense, to defend ourselves against that attack. Now, that was the same argument being made by the President of the United States. What Trump is doing? We're doing something for which I hanged this man. You can roughly locate any community in the world somewhere along a scale running all the way from democracy to despotism. Ich habe diese Filme in Bürgerkunde gehasst. Aber man, jetzt fehlen sie mir. When a competent observer looks for signs of despotism in a community, he looks beyond fine words and noble phrases. USA! USA! As a community moves towards despotism, common courtesy is withheld from large groups of people on account of their race. You're a fucking piece of shit, you fucking spit. Nasty fucking nigger. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am a Are citizen. You a nice citizen. Can you please get away from me? Then you should not be Can worried. you please get you away from me? I hate you fucking Chinese fuck. Excuse me. Put hey, your hey, hand hey, up one more time, you. motherfucker. Hey. You should get in that fucking douche oven and die like your ass. <laughs> fuck. fuck you! Hey, you nigga fucking people, okay? Get the fuck out of my country! Or because they don't like a man's religion. Is there a Muslim problem in the world? Absolutely. Christianity is under tremendous siege. It's death by a million cuts. We are getting less and less and less powerful in terms of a religion and in terms of a force. If a community's middle income groups grow smaller, the likelihood of despotism is increased. I make $7.30 an hour. I only get 17 hours a week. It's shit. Everything around here is. Mr. Mr. President, President, Mr. President, Mr. President. And when citizens have to accept what they're told. The media. You mean fake news? <laughs> well, that despotism stands a good chance. Sleazy people. Crooked media. The media has been unbelievably dishonest. The most dishonest groups of people I've ever met. But I'd never kill them. I hate them. I would never kill them. I would never do that. Ah, uh, that's sick. No, I wouldn't. Wait, let's see. Who's... I want to find a friendly reporter. Questions are not encouraged. Don't ask me questions like that. You're not a very good reporter doing that. How can you ask such a question? Do you have a question that now is a legitimate question? How dare you question the fact? I guess I don't understand. If the information coming from those leaks is real, then how can the stories be no, fake? No, the reporting is fake. And if books and newspapers and the radio are efficiently controlled... Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I have the right to ask the question. I'm a, no, 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 I'm a reporter and I have, I'm, don't touch me, sir, don't touch me, sir. The people will read and accept exactly what the few in control want them to. But it must be true. I saw it in this book right here. Now that's what I call a nice question. What I say goes, see? I'm the law around here. I'm president and they're not. He knows what he's doing. It's the same thing that authoritarians and fascists have done in the past. You need to make sure that when charges of corruption or other wrongdoing come forth, nobody believes the judiciary. We're the only country, essentially, that has judges. The intelligence services. The corruption at the top of the FBI. The press. Fake news. You need to make sure that they are discredited. What you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. People believe him, and this is, of course, puzzling to many of his critics, but if the strong man, the authoritarian, has done his job, he has bonded people to him a long time ago. And this Trump was doing that with his rallies and his loyalty oaths. Should we do the pledge? Raise your right hand. Do you pledge that on Tuesday you will go to vote for Donald Trump tomorrow? Raise that hand. I love you. I love you. People don't care if he's lying. They believe in him. And that's more important than believing the truth. You've been hearing me say it's a rigged system, but now I don't say it anymore because I won. Okay, it's true. You know, now I don't care. I don't care. The founders thought this thing's going to last a decade, a few decades. We'll be lucky if it's a few generations. Democracy means ruled by the people, and if the people aren't asserting themselves, then democracy will, will go away. And whether it's to some drastic form like fascism, or whether it's to some, you know, some form where yeah, we keep voting, but fewer of us are allowed to vote every year, and there's some kind of emergency statute, or you know, the, the money just makes the voting basically a joke, which is unfortunately, unfortunately, where we're tending anyway. Whether it's one or the other, there's there's so much there's so much to lose. There will be a civil war in the United States of America. The Christians will finally come out of the shadows. 
The sign says, hey, liberals, better get your guns if you try to impeach President Trump. Just try it. You will have a spasm of violence in this country, an insurrection like you've never seen. Drei Prozent der Amerikaner besitzen mehr als 160 Millionen Waffen. Was wollen diese Leute nur damit? I would take up arms because I think that the, I think we need a revolution. I'm not a violent person. I'm even an ordained pastor. Michael Moore is everywhere saying surround the Capitol, surround them, uprise, uh, you know, get violent. How did I know? I told you, I'm not that smart. We're in a, literally a 10 or 20 year struggle for the future of the country. And that's where you're just gonna have to man up, toughen up, just like our forefathers, right? We're gonna have to do exactly the kind of effort they had and we can win. The white establishment is now the minority. You ready to shoot Barry? Uh -huh. All right, let's go. He's bleeding now, isn't he? Susan Sontag, she said, we're just one 9-11 away from losing our democracy. Yeah, I mean, I, I may be a bit more pessimistic. I think we're zero 9-11s away. We have to think, we have to reflect, we have to think these are the kinds of things which happen in history. Let's not trade the, the, the real freedom for fake safety. When there is a terrorist attack, the thing we have to mobilize for is not safety, but freedom. There is one report as of yet unconfirmed that a plane has hit of the World Trade Center and you can see that there is smoke there coming out of at least two sides of the building. The search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. The USA Patriot Act adopted by Congress and signed by Bush six weeks after the attacks allows for searches of medical and financial records, computer and telephone conversations, and even for the books you take out of the library. Most of the people we spoke to say they're willing to give up some liberties to fight terrorism. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Last week, ICE agents fanned out in raids like this one in every state. Ripping children away from their families under this new policy. Taking babies away from their mother and, and locking up one or the other and separating them because they didn't they did no harm to anybody. They just didn't comply with the stupid regulations. Well, that's a crime against humanity, in my judgment. The Statue of Liberty stands there, you know? Send me your tired, your huddled masses yearning to, to breathe free. I lift my, my lamp beside the golden door. Where? Where? Uh, we don't see it in this country, and it pains me. And uh, that's the world in which we live. And. Uh, We've got to change it or perish. In einigen Monaten werden wir erkennen, dass wir nie eine echte Demokratie hatten und dass das, was wir hatten, durch einen nationalen Notstand ausgelöscht wurde. Werden wir uns dann fragen, wann der Moment gewesen wäre, an dem wir die Dinge noch rechtzeitig zum Guten hätten wenden können? als der Lehrer im Bekanntenkreis einen Zweitjob annehmen musste? Als wir unseren Freund und Helfer das erste Mal in dieser Montur sahen und er in diesem Gefährt herumfuhr? Als wir von den Pillen abhängig wurden, die den Schmerz vertreiben sollten und wir erkannten, dass es nicht der Schmerz war, der verschwinden musste? Als wir erfuhren, dass unser geliebter Präsident mehr Spenden von Goldman Sachs angenommen hat als jeder andere Politiker. Wir wollten es jemandem sagen, aber stattdessen schluckten wir still die Galle runter. War es, als wir uns eingeredet haben, dass dieses Unheil nie in unserer Stadt geschehen würde? 
Oder als wir erkannten, dass wir Waffen mehr lieben als unsere Kinder? Wenn das das Amerika ist, das wir retten wollen, sollten wir uns vielleicht fragen, warum? Warum sollten wir dieses Amerika retten? Ich will das Amerika retten, das wir nie hatten. Es hätte nicht so enden müssen. Aber noch ist nicht alles verloren. verbreitet sich langsam. Doch wenn es zu Terror herangewachsen ist, ist es zu spät. Wir haben uns zu lange mit dem Gedanken beruhigt, dass die Verfassung uns rettet. Dass Wahlen uns retten. Dass der Sonderermittler uns rettet. Oder ein Amtsenthebungsverfahren. Wir haben gehofft, doch diese Hoffnung hat uns getötet. Zu hoffen war gutgläubig und passiv und beruhigend. Aber wir brauchten keine Ruhe, sondern Action. Manchmal braucht es einen Donald Trump, damit wir aufwachen, begreifen und uns eingestehen, dass wir das verkommene System abschaffen müssen, das Trump hervorgebracht hat. Wir müssen erkennen, dass unsere Zeit abgelaufen ist und wir sofort... Oh. Oh, gosh. What happened? Ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. Oh, my God. What do we do? It says this is not a drill. This is not a drill. Those are the exact words. Yes, Ballistic missile is threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not Where, a drill. What about Where? tourists? We have no idea where to go. I mean, this literally could be the start of a nuclear war. Shit. The U.S. Pacific Command has detected a missile threat to Hawaii. What do we do? A missile may impact on land or sea within minutes. Shit, this is not a drill. Holy shit. Das war nur ein Unfall, ein Versehen. Aber täuschen wir uns nicht. Das ist die Welt, in der wir jetzt leben. Six minutes and 20 seconds with an AR-15 and my friend Carmen would never complain to me about piano practice. Aaron Feist would never call Kira Miss Sunshine. Alex Schachter would never walk into school with his brother Ryan. Scott Beagle would never joke around with Cameron at camp. Helena Ramsey would never hang out after school with Max. Gina Montalto would never wave to her friend Liam at lunch. Joaquin Oliver would never play basketball with Sam or Dylan. Elena Petty would never. Carol Lugren would never. Chris Hickson would never. Luke Hoyer would never. Marquine Duque Aguiano would never. Peter Wang would never. Alyssa Alhadaf would never. Jamie Guttenberg would never. Meadow Pollock would never. Cause
costumes by the devil And the screenplay is adapted from a book that's embezzled This is where I grew up, this is where I grew proud This is where neighbors never say music is too loud This is where the streets have no name but they have history This is loss as victory Oh my name, it ain't nothing My age, it means less The country I come from Could be like the rest I was taught and brought up there Lost to above And the land that I live in Has got on its side I had an undying wish to keep from dying Itself and I tried flying I had an uprising in my soul The left was fighting and the right And the right was fighting the light And the light was blind in the night And the night woke up in tears When my fingers went to wipe them They became a poem But to write them They would have to speak tears In another language That would take years Now as I'm leaving I'm weary as hell The confusion I'm feeling The words fill my head and fall to the floor. If God's on your side, then would you ever need?